All right, we're going to discuss transfer functions. I will directly jump into the topic. Basically, transfer functions in the control theory are objects that relate inputs to outputs in the Laplace domain. For example, let's say you have a spring mass damper system, spring damper mass, uh, y is the position of the cart, and u is the uh, applied force. Then you can draw this free body diagram, and you can put the arrows like this. In this case, I consider no friction. Here is the input, negative uh, force due to the spring, negative force due to the damper. Then applying Newton's second law, acceleration ma, or y dot dot equals to this negative force minus ky minus b y dot plus u. So now um, here we are in the time domain. To find the transfer function, we need to go to the Laplace domain subject to zero initial conditions. That's the definition of the transfer function. They are based on zero initial conditions. Let's, I put it here, um, let's review time domain versus Laplace domain. If we have a function's derivative f dot, it transforms as s multiplied by f of s. s is the Laplace variable. If we have f dot dot, s to the power of 2, f, s, it goes like this. If you have three derivatives, s to the power of 3. This is, again, zero initial conditions. I am using this specific format. Um, so now, if we apply this transformation to here, we have m s to the power of 2, because we have two derivatives, we are on the Laplace domain, ky, it directly transforms like this, y dot is sy, so we have minus b sy plus u. Now I am grouping terms that depending on y, basically we have y m s to the power of 2 plus b s plus k equals to u. Now we are dividing output by input to define the transfer function. So we have 1 over m s to the power of 2 b s plus k. So once again, to wrap up the definition of the transfer function, we need to really relate outputs, how outputs change based on the inputs with respect to zero initial conditions. And here you go. This is your transfer function. So to create a transfer function, you, can, you need an ordinary differential equation so that you can write. This was for the spring mass damper system. Let's be a little bit more uh, general and give you another example. Let's say we have y dot dot plus 5 y dot plus 6 y equals to u dot plus u. I am going to the Laplace domain with zero initial conditions using this Laplace table for zero initial conditions. We arrive y s to the power of 2, 5 s multiplied by y and 6 multiplied by y equals to u, um, u dot. So us plus u itself. I am right now dividing output with the input. We have s plus 1 divided by s to the power of 2, 5s plus 6. So now you can, this is your transfer function. If you would like to write it a little bit prettier, you can write it like this, s plus 1 divided by s plus 2 multiplied by s plus 3. If you make this product, you are going to get this. Now, once you have a transfer function for a system, we define two important uh, things. One of them is zeros. The zeros are the roots of the numerator. Here is your R numerator. Its roots basically can be found by taking it, the numerator setting it to zero. If we solve this, we have S equals to minus one. Minus one is the zero of this system. So, and we have poles of a transfer function, and poles, similar to the zeros, basically, we are finding the roots of the denominator. So we are taking this denominator here, setting it to zero, solve for s. We have two poles, s equals to minus 2 and minus 3. These are the poles of this transfer function. And um, basically, poles play an important role in the solution. If you solve this ordinary differential equation or this uh, transfer function with respect to some input, say u of t equals to 1, you are going to get this solution, y of t equals to some constant e to the power of minus 2t plus some another constant e to the power of minus 3t plus some forced term. Now, I want you to focus on this unforced solution. These terms, minus 2 and minus 3, coming from the real part of the poles. 
here basically minus 2 and minus 3. So this point is very important. They always pop up in these exponential terms. Why do we care? Because um, when we try to discuss stability of a transfer function, the poles of the transfer function will be important to determine whether the system is stable or not. Now, if the unforced solution dies out as time progresses, this basically will converge to zero because of the minus sign. This will also converge to zero. Then we say that the system that we are looking at or the transfer function is stable, meaning that all poles are located on the left half plane. This is true um, basically if you have, if you end up having complex conjugate poles in addition to real poles, we look at its real part. If that real part of the pole are on the left half plane, then we say the system is stable. So in general, your system can have multiple poles. If all these poles are located on the left half plane or their uh, real, real part of those poles are negative, then we say the system is stable because our force solution will die out. And basically this is why we care about poles. What is the point of zeros? Zeros basically contribute to these constants. And um, they also play a role, of course, to assess system performance, convergence, and other, all other properties. But for the sake of stability, the location of the poles are very important since they pop up on directly on the solution. So this is not a co coincidence. So you can basically change the transfer function, find the poles. A real part of the poles will pop up on these exponential terms. So they need to be negative. All right. As this being said, right now we are looking here an open loop system. It is not a control system. Likewise, in this uh, ordinary differential equation, we have some input, we have some output. We can also find uh, closed loop poles and zeros. For example, you can have any block diagram. So I just uh, draw this, but really you can have an any, any uh, basically control diagram block diagram representing a feedback control system. You may have a reference signal, you may have your output. So you need to find the closed loop system transfer function relating output to applied reference. Then eventually you are going to have on your closed loop system transfer function some numerator div divided by the denominator similar to this. And then you can set closed loop systems numerator to zero to find closed loop zeros. You can select, you can set closed loop denominator to zero and solve for S to find closed loop poles. And if you're having trouble or if you want to understand more how to find closed loop system transfer functions from block diagrams, you can watch this YouTube video. I hope you find this helpful and let me know uh, if you have any questions in the comments. Take care.